Carlos Schwab was born Emil Martin Charles Schwab into a Jewish family in 1866 in Altona Holstein in northern Germany. But a few years later they moved to Geneva in Switzerland and between 1882 and 1884 he studied art there at the École des Arts Industrielles. Once he'd completed his training he left for Paris which was at the time a powerful magnet for any aspiring visually creative person in Europe. Initially he found work as a wallpaper designer and spent his leisure time in the bars and cafes of Montmartre, befriending the bohemian artists and writers. And despite taking Swiss nationality in 1888, Paris would be his permanent home for the rest of his life. But in addition to his design work, he continued to pursue his ambitions as a fine artist, and in 1892, when he was 26, he exhibited some of his paintings at a group exhibition held at the Salon de la Rose et Croix, and also created the poster which was used to advertise the show. Schwab, along with a number of his associates, was a follower of the obscure spiritual cult Rosicrucianism, which exerted a strong influence on his art. His subjects were generally mythological and allegorical and were largely considered to belong to the symbolist movement, although he was somewhat of a late arrival in that regard. As an illustrator he gravitated towards similar themes and naturally this was reflected in the literature he chose to visualise. It was in 1892 that his illustrations for Emile Zola's Le Rêve were published and although he shared the task of illustrating Zola's text with fellow illustrator Lucien Metivet, it was his series of dramatically compelling images and the book's subsequent popular and critical success which led to his permanent parallel career in illustration. Most of what I could find from this book is line only, but there are also a few colour versions to be found, which I suspect came from a later reprinted edition but they've been coloured with considerable sensitivity and although it's guesswork on my part, I would be fairly confident that it was Schwab himself who added the colour. In the following year, he published a series of line and wash illustrations for a translation by the writer Catul Mendes of the Gospel of the Infancy of Christ, originally written in Latin in the 10th century. This was a clear demonstration of both his illustrative abilities and fascination with religious themes. And this collection of formally composed images made great creative use of a limited restrained colour palette of considerable emotive strength. In 1894 he was chosen to be one of a group of illustrators who each contributed to specific sections in Edouard Harrowcourt's book L'Effort. Schwab was commissioned to illustrate L'Immortalité, and although there were also a few figurative narrative monochrome illustrations, the bulk of his contribution was in the form of colour page decorations of great aesthetic beauty. His work was by now featuring alongside Mucha and others in the prestigious arts magazine Limage, and in 1897 he designed a particularly compelling dramatic poster for Vincent Dandy's opera Ferval. In 1899 he published an illustrated edition of the ancient Greek tale of Chrysis, the priestess of Hera, and his illustrations for this largely erotic tale were a vehicle for a change in Schwab's use of colour. Where he'd previously favoured fairly basic washes, he was now using a much more textural and tonal method, which blended watercolour washes with gouache and a combination of pencil, crayons and pastel. The results were a considerable visual success, and he continued with this technique on many later projects, including his next. This was his 1900 edition of Charles Baudelaire's Les Fleurs du Mal, featuring a series of suitably disturbing colour images by Schwab, which amplified and illuminated the author's dark sexual and violent themes with great success. <laughs> 
Even though some of these images were, and still are, considered challenging to more sensitive viewers, they were undoubtedly one of his greatest and most enduring collection of illustrations, and the perfect symbiosis of words and pictures. More illustration and art, some religious, some decidedly not, followed in the first couple of years of the new century, and in 1903 Sharp worked with Catul Mendes again on the book of epic verse Hesperos. As with the Baudelaire book, this too contained its fair share of adult material, but also more chivalric and heroic subjects, and the overall tone of these illustrations, which were a return to his earlier less textured line and wash approach, used an attractive light colour palette and were considerably less visually disturbing. Despite the volume of illustrations Schwab was creating in this period, he continued to paint with success and in 1907 he created what is generally considered his most significant and enduring painting, La Vague. When first exhibited it caused a sensation in Paris, and both the studies he made to inform the rendering and posing of the various figures, and of course the painting itself, represent a significant milestone in the development of 20th century fantasy art. In 1908, he illustrated the religious book Parole d'un Croyant, originally written in 1834, with a series of unexpectedly grainy monochromes. These appear to have been created either as drawings in crayon or possibly as stone lithographs. But whatever they are, they are certainly not pen and ink. In the same year, he illustrated Albert Samin's Jardin de l'Enfant, and in this instance it's known that his original pencil drawings were reproduced as wood engravings by a Monsieur Beltran. A two-colour palette was used at printing with debatable purpose, but nevertheless the results were particularly dramatic and visually memorable. And in a run of productivity that's hard to comprehend, 1908 also saw the publication of Maurice Maeterlinck's La Vie des Abeilles, and Schwab's contribution could not have been more unlike his usual approach. For this project he created a series of charming rural scenes, which unusually for Schwab not only had not the faintest whiff of the decadent, but also didn't feature a single human figure. This seems to have been the only publication for which he used this approach, and had it not been credited in the book, it would be hard to identify Schwab as the creator. In 1913, he produced a series of more brutal monochromes for a limited edition of Olive Schreiner's Rev. This was a limited edition of only 1,100 copies. And these images look very much like wood engraving, but I can find no definitive evidence. And they might just be pen and ink mimicking that effect. During the Great War, Schwab seems to have gone underground to an extent, and more than likely concentrated on his art but he did create this grotesque monochrome indictment of Germany's aggression, based on an earlier image produced originally for Les Fleurs du Mal. Following the end of the war, his creative output in art and illustration increased dramatically, and in 1922 Schwab published his illustrated edition of Pelias et Melisande, written by Maurice Mitterling 30 years earlier. This fantasy romance proved to be a perfect match for his highly rendered, visually absorbing technique. And this rare original artwork from the series clearly shows his prowess with the combination of ink, wash and crayon. And apparently with the lighter side of his imagination very much to the fore, in 1925 he illustrated the ancient love story of Daphne C. Chloe, written by the Greek poet Longus in the 2nd century. This project also featured similarly attractive and absorbing colour images, which succeeded in bringing this romance to visual life. Sadly, it seems this was his last published work, and in 1926, Carlos Schwab died at the age of only 60, in avant seine et More than most, Schwab had successfully straddled the two disciplines of art and illustration, without apparent compromise in either. His fascination for the darker side of human imagination, use of symbolism and spiritual imagery were common to both. And the work he produced indicated that he accepted and worked with the constraints of print just as well as he did with his painted art. <laughs> 
Why he isn't better known, especially to devotees of fantasy art, I can't imagine. And if this video does anything at all to address that, then I'll take a certain pride in having brought him to wider attention and appreciation.